thank you all for coming. It is the last talk of the day, and I'm in between you and your beer. <laughs> Uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Drupal at p high performance, uh, especially when you're using the MySQL database. And here is an alternative called MariaDB. Oh, OK. Is this better? Yeah. This mic doesn't seem to like become longer, so it seems I have to bend. Uh, is this better? <laughs> OK. OK. So, first things first. How many of you here use MySQL? If you, <laughs> I was gonna say if you don't use it, you should put up your hand. <laughs> okay. How many of you have heard of MariaDB before? That's good. How many of you here use MariaDB? Okay, so a bunch of you already use MariaDB. So there is, there is likelihood that you may not learn many new things because you're already part of the MariaDB community. However, I'm here to also help you maybe make more use of MariaDB. And if you are using MariaDB on a site and would like a case study, please send me an email. So, a little bit about me. I, I am Colin Charles. You can email me at colin at mariadb.org. I'm also active on the uh, Twitter. If you are on Twitter, consider sending me a tweet, say hi. I am the MariaDB guy at Monty Program. Um, I should probably tell you that SkySQL and Monty Program have agreed to merge uh, about a month ago. So I guess very soon I'll be the MariaDB guy at SkySQL. However, if you have been familiar with the MySQL world and realized that MySQL was then purchased by Sun and Sun then was then purchased by Oracle, you might be thinking, is this MariaDB thing safe for me to continue using? And yes, it is, because MariaDB is actually governed by a foundation, very much like the Drupal Foundation. So there can never be um, one, one controlling entity buying over MariaDB. So consider this um, MySQL done right. I used to work at MySQL AB for a very long time, making MySQL, and then I joined Sun when they acquired us. But I left as soon as Oracle proposed to acquire Sun. I have worked on the Fedora project as well. I was on the very first Fesco board. Anybody here use Fedora? Wow, it's cool. And uh, I used to also work on OpenOffice.org. Anybody use that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, so I was responsible for some of the presentation module in OpenOffice and even I use Keynote today. Uh, my history with Drupal. Um, I have to admit I've spent more time on MediaWiki and WordPress um, schemas and helping those projects than I've helped uh, Drupal, which is sad because I've actually known Drupal since 2005 where I was introduced to Civic CRM at uh, Aspiration Tech Advocacy Day in San Francisco. I really wish to contribute more to Drupal, but I'm not a front end guy, so I guess soon I'll be contributing stuff on the back end. This is the rough agenda of what we're gonna discuss today, and I have approximately 15 minutes to do that with some questions. I'm not sure if we should do questions and answers before or after, but Let's try to take it after. Also, for most of this talk, I'm going to reference MariaDB 10, which is currently software that is not GA release. So I'm going to mention some stuff that is only available in an alpha release, but it will be GA in like at the end of July. So it's almost as good as being GA. And we run it in production, and we know customers that run it in production as well. So I'm guessing your, you, as a Drupal user, would have great experience with MariaDB because on the fourth screen of set up a database, it says set up MySQL, MariaDB, or equivalent. So you've probably already seen this word MariaDB, but you've just maybe not taken action. A handful of you have, maybe about 10% of you have taken action, which is great. Hopefully at the end of this talk, 
the rest of you will take action and convert from MySQL to MariaDB as well. Um, it has also been recommended in, in the Drupal documentation as part of the requirements alongside MySQL. It is used in testbot, which means Drupal core runs well against MariaDB. A Azure and Barracuda uh, also has MariaDB available for it. And we received our first bug from a Drupal user uh, during the 5.3 series days. So we received our first bug from a Drupal user, I would say about a year and a half ago. So we've definitely had users saying, hey, we have you know, bugs that the query didn't materialize in a similar way as it did in MySQL. So we've, and we've spent time since then making MariaDB's query optimizer even better. And we would naturally have some bugs when we were kicking the tires on improving the query optimizer. So what is MariaDB? MariaDB is a community developed branch of MySQL, very much like um, Drupal is a community or oriented project. It is not backed by any one company. It is, uh, it is you know, governed by a foundation. It is also a feature enhanced MySQL, but I guess we, I wanna make clear that it's not a patch set against MySQL any longer. If for some absurd reason MySQL isn't developed in the future, we're happy to continue developing MariaDB. We have lots of core developers who know what we're doing, so it, it doesn't make a difference if MySQL is developed or not. But I also don't want to say that we're a fork because we merge with MySQL on a monthly basis. So we're still a branch with a huge amount of different code and different features inside. We are also fully 100% compatible with MySQL. We are a drop-in replacement, and we are feature complete to the T. So if MySQL has something, we will have the same thing. And again, I cannot reiterate more how important it is to be governed by the MariaDB Foundation as opposed to be governed by a corporation. And the aims of MariaDB are, are really, really um, important. We are 100% compatible drop-in replacement. This means today if you uninstall MySQL, install MariaDB, it'll just work. All the on-disk data is the same. This is true even for InnoDB. The on-the-wire protocol is exactly the same. If you are migrating from MySQL 5.1 to 5.5, like MariaDB 5.5, you should run MySQL underscore upgrade. But if you are migrating from MySQL 5.5.25 to MariaDB 5.5.30, where it's a, it's a similar major version, you probably don't even need to run MySQL upgrade. Our focus is really to make stable releases. We, we don't believe in releasing software. We, we like to have a schedule. We like to say we like to create one new release every six to nine months. But if, the, if it's not stable or if there are bugs or if there are regressions, we do not want to release it. We will hold back a release to make sure the software is perfect because our aim is to be used in data centers, large data centers. And we really in, in, increase the tests and the QA um, cases available for MariaDB. Our code coverage is actually pretty good now. We have way more test cases than any other MySQL branch or MySQL itself. Also, we have way more features, so you have more test cases naturally. And we obviously aim to have no regressions. That means if you are, we all, every time we make a push, we test upgrades from MySQL to MariaDB, previous version of MariaDB to the current version of MariaDB. We have intensive test suites. The other thing is we are 100% GPL v2. <laughs> we have no enterprise product, no commercial extensions, nothing of that sort. We are GPL to the core. However, if you want to embed um, things against, say, libmysql client and you want to have commercial software, we also provide LGPL, C, and Java client libraries so that you don't have to get an OEM license or pay anyone for that. I did not include that in the slides because it's not directly important to the Drupal community, but we found at least one person outside at the expo hall saying that this was something that they could, they could use, so I'm mentioning it now. We also have Maria captains from uh, many different companies, companies like Sling Search, LinkedIn, SkySQL, haha. We were different companies before. Taobao out of China, Facebook, Percona, Codeship, and a whole bunch more companies. And uh, if you follow the Maria 
uh, discuss mailing lists and the Moray developers mailing lists you will end our bugs tree you'll realize that Google has also taken a great interest in MariaDB why they are taking an interest is speculation up to you <laughs> now MariaDB is filled with a whole bunch of features and the last time I talked about all the features without even going through practical examples it took a good eight hour course I, I have one hour and I, I have to respect your time, so I'm going to only focus on the MariaDB features that benefit Drupal users, not all the MariaDB features. In fact, I took a list of all our features and I pasted it into Wordle and it came up with this tag cloud, how web 2.0 of me. <laughs> and um, it's, it's a lot of features. <laughs> I mean, we've spent a lot of years engineering MariaDB now. <laughs> But uh, I think the one most important thing is that our default storage engine is ExtraDB. We can switch to InnoDB, but we always want to generally have ExtraDB around. ExtraDB is generally, it has a lot less checkpointing, so smoother checkpointing on the graph on the left. And uh, it has a lot less flushing to disk with a lot more stable performance. So here you can see the slides with um, ExtraDB in green is MariaDB with extra DB, showing you generally stable performance that's increasing, not, you know, jigsaws. The other uh, thing that you should probably note is that Oracle has been in developing InnoDB a lot, so kudos to Oracle. We have taken uh, InnoDB from 5.6 because there's more, more features inside compared to the 5.5 release. However, we are just waiting for extra DB to include the bitmap checking so that we can have better immediate backup snapshots. And why is InnoDB important to you? Why is extra DB important to you? <laughs> because extra DB has features that InnoDB itself doesn't have, like fast InnoDB restarts. How many of you run Drupal in the cloud? Okay. So the cloud is inherently, today I have a slave, I don't have enough, I, I have uh, too much capacity, I tear the slave down, I add another one tomorrow when I get slash dotted, and I take it down again, etc. We have fast InnoDB restarts, which basically pre-populates the InnoDB buffer pool. And this is great for your cloud environments because it will pre-populate the buffer pool to a state right before shutdown with sequential IO. So you get a fully warmed up server with a warm buffer pool in minutes rather than hours or days. This is hugely important for cloud. We also improve single core performance, which is something you get in the cloud regularly because you just fire up an instance. So we improved single core performance as well as multi-threaded performance. We make use of RAM better than we would in stock in ODB. So for all intents and purposes, you can consider extra DB to be a better InnoDB. And ExtraDB is jointly really developed by us at MariaDB as well as the folk at Percona who developed Percona ExtraDB. And they develop wonderful backup software as well. Ah. So these are some of the interesting features that we've been shipping inside of MariaDB that will benefit a Drupal user. MariaDB 5.1 we released in February of 2010. Keep in mind that Oracle announced the purchase of MySQL, uh, so Sun, in April of 2009. So we didn't have a lot of time. We had to you know, leave the company, start, start the new build system, etc., create new test cases, and so on. So the, the most important features that we focused on was one was table elimination. Table elimination is basically anchor modeling. So if you have a highly normalized tables, you can now, instead of querying, um, in, when, you, when you write a query, instead of touching e each and every table, sometimes you can derive the answer without touching the tables. And anchor modeling is not something you get commonly inside of open source databases. We also included the most important new storage engine, ExtraDB. We included a whole bunch of other storage engines which I, will, which I don't consider important enough to mention here today. And we've had this wonderful thing called pool of threads, or a thread pool. So in February of 2010, we've had a thread pool. I have a whole slide dedicated to the thread pool, so 
let's move on from that. MariaDB 5.2 came out in November of 2010 as well. This is based on MariaDB 5.1. Here we gave you more instrumentation. Now you can do things like show client index statistics, show client user statistics, so you can start monitoring what users are doing, how your indexes are performing, and so on. Today, you have something called a performance schema that you can use as well inside of MySQL 5.5 and greater. However, the performance schema has overhead, close to even 10% running overhead, whereas the extended user statistics have no overhead. So this is something you can consider if you're running Drupal at scale as well. I have dedicated slides for both the segmented MyISM key cache as well as the PAM authentication plugin, so we'll move on from that. MariaDB 5.3 was based on 5.2, and um, it may sound like we were very lazy in the whole of 2011, but this was probably the biggest change to the optimizer we made. It took like 12 man years of work, so we released it in February of 2012. And uh, it was still based on the 5.1 code base, 5.1 base. And um, here we had huge changes to the optimizer, join changes like you know block nested loop joins, hash joins, classic hash join, batch key access. We had materialized views come it's come in five three. We have um, disk access changes like multi range read. All these changes benefit your queries without you having to do anything for them. You may have to turn them on via the add add optimizer switch, but you don't have to do anything else. So if you're writing your regular queries, chances are if you test against MariaDB, it should run better. Query execution time should be faster. And we also included something called microsecond pre precision because nowadays when you run queries, you get them returned sometimes in 0, 0.00 seconds or 0 0.01 seconds. That's not enough when you're running with today's hardware because today's hardware is so much faster. So we have microsecond precision to tell you how many tenths of a second you, your query is coming back in so you can actually improve query performance that way as well. We improved replication tremendously. Um, how many of you here run a master-slave environment? Awesome. So master-slave environments, you know, we have enabled things like group commit, as well. I have a whole slide dedicated to that as well. <laughs> um, progress reporting. When you do an alter table or a load data in file, sometimes the alter table can take you several seconds. Sometimes it can take you five minutes so you can go get a cup of coffee. Sometimes it can take you months. Um, alter tables that take you months are no fun. So we included a progress report, so now it'll actually tell you how long it's going to take you. And if you're doing load data in file for your, like, your ETL operations, you can also see progress reporting as to how long it's going to take. So you can figure out if I get a cup of coffee or I go away for the weekend. But one of the other cool features that we're starting to implement, and you'll start seeing is that we're building building blocks, is that if you are running in shared hosting environments or in cloud environments and you're in, like an ops person, with MySQL, you could always do kill hard thread ID or kill soft thread ID, so soft would you know, not, not kill like, running processes that would damage the database. We now allow you to do things like kill hard user and specify a username. So if you're running in a multi-tenant environment and you have um, one user ha having a Drupal instance with a module that is clearly using too many queries that's affecting all the other users, you can just go kill hard user username. You can, of course, schedule this, put it inside the event scheduler, which we have inside of MariaDB, which is also inside of MySQL, or trigger it against cron. So I think the kill user is actually pretty useful for you. MariaDB 5.5 is when people actually really started getting interested in MariaDB. Does anybody here use anything older than MariaDB 5.5? No, so all of you started with 5.5, for the ones that did start. MariaDB 5.5 came out in April of 2012, so it's out for a little over a year now. We, were, we obviously took a long time to release it because we had to merge 5.3, big changes in the optimizer, and then we had to add some new features as well. We included a more efficient thread pool, and I want to uh, talk 
clearly a, a little bit more about that. I have a slide still on the thread pool, which I, I will show you, nice pretty graph. But our thread pool is open source. If you use MySQL and you want to use the thread pool, you have to buy MySQL Enterprise. We said, that's not right. We must make it open source for you. So that's what we did. We made an open source, more efficient thread pool compared to what we had in MariaDB 5.1. We also included a non-blocking client library. So you can start operations in threads and let, it, let the result travel back to you when it actually is ready to come back to you. This, again, has no great um, performance in terms of um, PHP, but if you're running MySQL on the command line, you can actually do things like you know, show status on many machines, for example. The Node.js people, because Node.js is very asynchronous, they decided to make something called MariaSQL. So there's a, there's a very fast Node.js driver out there, but again, not relevant to this crowd. We also included limit rows examined. This is kind of useful because sometimes you have silly users that say we want to do a select star from T1 and just let it run. Now you can actually say you want to limit it to how many rows it's examined. So we, we use uh, condition pushdown to actually not just read the first, like you know, th this example has 10,000 rows, not just read the first 10,000 rows, but to, read, to, to use the optimizer to see what the optimizer was going to see and then let the optimizer limit 10,000 rows. So you're not just getting a, a head of 10,000 or a tail of 10,000, but you're actually getting what you should be getting. I have a slide dedicated to Sphinx SC. And uh, we also included extended keys for InnoDB, which we are now extending so that you can also use in TalkyDB. And um, InnoDB has secondary keys, and they contain user-defined columns as well as primary key columns. The optimizer now uses, uses it, finally. So, the le so less rows are examined. So when you do an explain on a query, you will now see that the reference strategy will change from constant to null, and you'll see that the joint performance can go up anywhere between zero to 2.5 times improvement in performance. So extended keys is something that you will never have to touch, but will improve your performance anyway. MariaDB 10. This is generally what most of my examples are based on. We're, we're horribly embarrassed to tell you that it took us about a year to merge MariaDB 5.5. <clears throat> but we can, with 5.5, compare against MySQL 5.5. And at last comparison, we have over 1.5 million lines of extra code, and the diff stands at 61 megabytes in size. That means we have a huge, huge chunk of changes, and that actually comes back into features. 5.6, the code has been heavily refactored, which would make us porting to 5.6 very, very hard. It would probably take us another year to do the merge. So instead of doing that, we decided we'll continue on with MariaDB 5.5. We will backport all the features from MySQL 5.6, and we'll continue adding new features that benefit users. So for all intents and purposes, you will, MariaDB 10 is MySQL 5.6. <coughs> MariaDB 11 will be MySQL 5.7. So in 10.0, we took a bunch of new features we took InnoDB from MySQL, pretty stock. We took the performance schema from MySQL, also pretty stock. Online operations is actually pretty cool because finally you can do things like online alter table, which is something that you couldn't do before, which would take a, a, your database potentially offline and could be very long operation, which is probably what made NoSQL databases generally quite popular. We also re-implemented something, so now, for example, now will be the default in your daytime columns. We're also including things like global transaction ID, but not, not the ag actual implementation that you get inside of MySQL 5.6 because we think that is a buggy implementation, so we are improving it. And we're also giving true parallel replication in the slave threads. But what, what other things can benefit a Drupal user? Multi-source replication is definitely one of them. If you are already running in a master-slave environment, you are likely also thinking about partitioning your data or what is now called sharding. Now if you have many, now if you have many different masters and you want to actually synchronize the data back again, 
multi-source replication will allow you to replicate many masters back into a single slave. Now you can run your ETL, analytical, analytical queries, or BI tools against that one slave. This has been a long-standing feature request for MySQL, which we now have inside of MariaDB. This is not available inside of MySQL 5.6. It's unlikely to be available in 5.7 either. Remember I told you about the building blocks as well? Now you can explain on, on running threads. You can do show explain for thread ID, so show explain for maybe two or three, and it'll actually give you the explain of a running query. Previously, you had to actually do explain before you ran the query. Now you can do it on running queries as well. Probably something, again, very useful when you have long running queries. We also have per thread memory usage. Again, useful if you are in a multi-tenant environment where you can now do, you can either query the information schema and then kill things based on users exceeding certain amounts of memory, for example, or and even show status will show you how much memory is being used. So more useful features for people in these kind of environments. Anybody here use Cassandra for big data? Okay, I see at least one person put up their hand. <laughs> We're kind of deciding to do, think that MariaDB is more of a data platform now as opposed to just accessing SQL. So very soon, well actually this is already something you can do today, you can query, instead of using CQL, you can query a Cassandra cluster from MariaDB. So there are no um, applications out there, but if you are considering writing a new module that maybe wants to also have big data querying, or you want to keep track of logged in users in real time, you might want to store that kind of d details inside of Cassandra and then query it from MariaDB. The benefit of this is you don't have to ever write CQL. You can do it with regular SQL. So you can extend Drupal relatively easily to do this for you in your new modules. We're also working on a key value store called LevelDB. Many of you have probably never heard of it or used it, but it actually comes inside of your standard Chrome browsers as part of IndexedDB. So if you are using Chrome, you already have a certain embedded copy of LevelDB. And we figured that at some stage, people will want to access key value stores as well. Dynamic columns is the building block for how we end up doing the Cassandra storage engine. Here you can store different sets of columns for every row in the table. This is very, very much no SQL like. This is great for an e-commerce store, for example, and uh, there are definitely commerce related applications that currently are, that are you know, satisfied by Drupal. However, now you can have different attributes to each item. We did use this as a base for building the Cassandra storage engine, and we wanted to join the rest of the world so that now you can actually request a row and get it returned back to you in JSON format. JSON is becoming a popular uh, interchange format, and we expect that this should be relatively useful in the future. And with Drupal 8 coming out, where you will also be able to query things against MongoDB, this might be a very good bridge again Oh, and you can name dynamic columns. This was a limitation. We introduced dynamic columns in 5.3, but we've only allowed you to finally name them in 10.0. Anybody still using my iZAM? Everybody switched to InnoDB? No. There are a couple of hands going up. My iZAM has major, major bottlenecks. It's, it's great for bulk inserts, but it has major read bottlenecks, and that's largely because it's affected by the key buffer. This is something that Drupal users who are currently on MyISM know and feel the pain of. You can use segmented MyISM key caches. You can uh, add this as an option in your my.cnf and have up to 64 segments to improve performance of up to 250% based on more threads that are started. So this, this slide shows queries per second as well as the threads that are going. So, uh, the moment you start hitting eight threads, you start seeing great performance already. My advice, though, is to obviously migrate to InnoDB, which we ship as ExtraDB, because you do not want to be running MyISM. But if you are using MyISM, this is invaluable. 
We also have batch key access speedups, and uh, this is an example from certain commerce product that you can extend from Drupal, showing you increased performance with regular joins and batch key access joins. So anywhere between three to 10 times the performance for this particular query. Another really cool thing is that subqueries finally materialize. Many users of MySQL know that subqueries just do not work. You, you rewrite them as joins because subqueries never materialize. Of course, we've seen many modules and extensions also have the use of subqueries, which then trashes the server because the server attempts to rewrite them or maybe never materializes them, which makes th things really slow for you. Now we materialize subqueries. This is a run on a data set of about 30 gigabytes using dbt3. Um, you can see that from slow to faster or impossible to much faster. Usually inside of several Drupal modules that we've tested, you actually get slow returns because it, it does eventually materialize, but it's really slow. However, with MariaDB, the subqueries do materialize and they're much faster. And we have a subquery cache as well. So we do cache the results. Now MySQL 5.6 also has a subquery optimizer that can generally optimize most subqueries, but ours is a little better. Plus it has the cache. If you are using replication, you do realize that if you want to have the D in ACID, the durability, you need to, you need to enable sync bin log equals one as well as InnoDB flush log at transaction commit equals one. If you do that with MySQL, you get the green line. Flat performance, you don't get any, th any increased throughput. However, if you do it with MariaDB, your transactions that can continue, continually increase even when you have many more concurrent clients with relatively good standing, which is the blue one up there. Now you might be wondering what the other orange and yellow ones are, and that is um, Facebook. This benchmark was not performed by any, any of us. It was performed by Mark Callahan, who works at Facebook. He, they, they arguably probably one of the largest users of group commit out there. They created a Facebook version one and version two of the patch as well. But with MariaDB, we did a much better job, and it's in production code now. So it's, it's been in MariaDB since 5.3, and if you happen to use the Percona server variant, it's also inside of 5.5. They've ported our group commit. So if you are, if you are using replication, and you, if you are running Drupal at scale, you will definitely have a slave. You probably want to turn this on. The thread pool, I think, is probably the most useful for Drupal users. You have many, many short running queries every time you load a page that, that doesn't hit the cache or whenever you make a change. If you have many, many concurrent clients or users, you will want to definitely turn the thread pool on. Why is this important? When you have short running queries, instead of opening up one thread per connection, you now can make use of a pool of threads that keep on getting reused. One of the things that uh, is bad for performance is that if you don't have enough cache threads, uh, you will actually launch too many new threads and it will cause your OS to have contention issues. You just turn this on by having an option in your my.cnf, thread underscore handling equals pool of threads, restart the server, and that green line there is my, my SQL with, with MariaDB with concurrent clients with pool of threads enabled, and the orange version is one without pull of threads enabled. My suggestion is turn this on if you are running a Drupal website at, at scale. You will find that this is very useful because as you have more concurrent clients, you want more OLTP threshold. This is one feature that you can get inside of MySQL Enterprise, i.e. something you pay for, or inside of MariaDB 5.5 or MariaDB 10. If you have ever wanted to authenticate against the PAM server, and we are now working actively to authenticate against LDAP as well as Active Directory, we now allow you to do this as well. With the PAM authentication plugin which we introduced inside of MariaDB 
This is something, again, you don't have to pay us for. It's completely free. And I think one of the cool features that uh, I played with is integrating it with Google Authenticator. So Google Authenticator is something you can download on your Android phone and possibly even your iPhone which will like, generate uh, sequence numbers for you. You can, turn, you can configure it to work with PAM, and uh, it can also be, be two-factor authentication for you. So you can now, instead of just logging in regularly to Drupal, you can provide one extra uh, form of login, which is uh, code that is generated that's valid for like one minute every time it's generated. So many people get hacked over time because of weak passwords or using passwords over Wi-Fi and so on. Two-factor authentication will ensure that you don't get hacked unless your phone gets stolen as well. Anybody here use full text search? All right, a bunch of you. Anybody here use Sphinx before? Also a bunch of you. Now, you can do full text search with Sphinx, and you can also have your regular database there, however, we have a storage engine for Sphinx that will connect directly to the Sphinx search D. So you can specify queries using regular SQL again, and you can let Sphinx do what it's good, good at doing, indexing, searching, sorting, filtering, etc. So let Sphinx do what it's good at, because Sphinx is optimized for these tasks. There is no performance overhead, except if it's traveling over a network, there will be network latency. But if it's running locally, it sh you should have no performance over it. And you can also join the search tables later with other MySQL tables. So if you, have, if you make a query and the return result set is something you want to join with InnoDB or MySM, it's something you can totally do. This is one of the beauties of the storage engine interface is that you can join tables from other, other databases. Or in the Postgres world, this is now called the foreign data wrappers. And we've called it the storage engine interface for a long time now. Anybody here use Drupal with maps? Anybody building location-aware apps? <laughs> All right, a bunch of you. MySQL sucks at GIS. MySQL can allow you to find out the min minimum boundary regions and tell you how to get in a rectangle, re rectangular side, for, tell you this is one line and this is one line. Last I checked, you needed to check maps inside and when we started MariaDB, we said we will never touch two spaces. One space is embedded. embedded the embedded war is won by SQLite. And we will never touch GIS because it's, we think it's won by post-GIS. Oh, we found a customer that wanted to pay for this feature, and we ended up d developing it. So now we have full open GIS support inside of MariaDB since 5.3. And it has full SQL geometry types. So it can tell you how to get from Martin Luther King to the Lloyd Center, not via just lines, but an actual route. You can now store that inside of MariaDB using the ST prefix, and you can also do geometric operations on them. So I think this is actually pretty useful, and we're working with the folk at OpenStreetMap to start looking at MariaDB now as well. Like, ironically, that's a SkySQL engineer who's, who's, who's doing it in his spare time. Anybody hosting on SSDs now? All right, a bunch of you. Anybody hosting on Fusion I.O. cards? Also, at least one person put up their hands. That's awesome. So, Fusion I.O. cards are much faster than your SSD cards. We have already started working with Fusion I.O., and we now support atomic writes, much better performance than you'd get inside of InnoDB using Fusion I.O.'s DirectFS. DirectFS is not a file system that's fully in production yet, but if you're using Fusion I.O. with things like XFS as well, you get amazing performance. So if you're worried about MariaDB or InnoDB, the extra DB that we ship, not using up your SSD to its fullest, rest assured we are using the SSDs to its fullest. We're not using Fusion I.O. cards to its fullest, but we're using it about 70% of the way already, and we're improving it regularly because the work literally started a few months ago, and we managed to have a, a first release in April which Fusion IO was very happy about. So if you are, you, most of you are probably using spinning disk at the moment, but the next generation, which is not far off, will be probably all SSDs, because it's getting cheaper and cheaper, and more reliable as well. 
So we believe that MariaDB is already a superset of features. We're going to merge in two steps. You're going to get 10, 0, 3, or 4 as a GA. 10, 0, 3 is likely to be what will end up being the GA. And you'll get 10, 1, 1, or 2, or 3. And by the time you have 10, 1, x, you have the complete equivalent to MySQL 5, 6. So for all practical purposes, 10, 1 will be a full drop-in replacement to MySQL 5, 6. We're lucky because it takes people time to use a new release of MySQL. And 5.6 only became GA in January, and there's still huge amounts of bugs being reported to make it get fixed. We're also integrating some other storage engines which could be of interest to the Drupal community. One of them is TalkyDB. TalkyDB went open source a month ago as well. You might be wondering why everything go happens a month ago. April is traditionally when we have a huge MySQL conference. It happens in Santa Clara. We like to make announcements there. So TalkyDB, instead of using B-trees, uses fractal tree indexes. It also has great, great insert speed. Um, there, there are benchmarks that are published today on Planet MySQL that show great insert performance, even compared to the archive storage engine. It has great compression. Again, something that's compared to the archive storage engine. And it has online schema f flexibility. What does that mean? You can do hot schema changes and online changes if you use TalkyDB, because they've extended that feature inside of TalkyDB. Also, if you're using SSDs, it's got amazing amounts of compression. TalkyDB was probably always an interesting storage engine, but it never really made it into mainline MariaDB because it was not open source. And many people don't want to use something that's not open source. It is now, so totally check out TalkyDB. I think the other important thing about TalkyDB is that it is also like a drop-in replacement for InnoDB, so it doesn't have weird features like the ARIA storage engine that we ship as well. So uh, I have tested TalkyDB to run against Drupal. It runs fine, including the tests. We also included another storage engine called the Connect storage engine, which can now allow you to read, write, or update to many different formats. And probably the most interesting different format there is ODBC. Because now, you can connect using the Connect engine to, say, Oracle or any other database that supports ODBC and then get return result sets and then join it again and display this kind of data back out to your web app in Drupal. So again, more glue code that you need to write at the back, but the database is giving you more so that you, have, you can still use your favorite front end. How many of you have heard of MariaDB Galera cluster before or Percona ExtraDB cluster? Okay, more hands go up when I say Percona ExtraDB cluster, awesome. So it is based on the same InnoDB that you really know how to use. InnoDB, for what it's worth, has its quirks, but it's also really well known how to work around those quirks. This is something that many other database systems don't have because people don't know how to work around their quirks. MariaDB Galar cluster, we believe, is really made for today's environments. It is fully synchronous replication. It is read as well as write scalable. It, you can have multi-master topology, something you could not do in MySQL before, but should be able to do once GTID works well. And it guarantees no lag or loss transactions. Overhead to have synchronous replication in, a, in the same data center is less than 300 milliseconds at the worst case in all benchmarks and real-world use cases that we've had so far. So generally, to Drupal, your multi-master cluster will just look like one big database with multiple entry points. But generally speaking, you will have many different databases in the cluster, and your clients can connect to any node. You can have, obviously, several nodes. Galera handles the, the node provisioning automatically. It has a, a load balancer as well and a daemon. And the replication is completely synchronous. It is not asynchronous. So when, when, you, when you commit a transaction to one node, you are guaranteed to have committed that same transaction to at least one other node as well, if not all the nodes. Synchronous replication should, should make sure it's on all the nodes. But of course, today you're running things in a cloud-based environment, so you may have other concerns as well, which I will address in the next slide. But first, I need to tell you one very important thing. If you're running Galera cluster, because it is quorum-based, if there are failures, 50% does not constitute a quorum. So if you have just two machines, 
that is not enough. A mi the minimum configuration for Galera cluster is three machines, so that you have more, more when it comes to, this, to, to detecting a quorum. So if at all you, 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 you see that there's a failure, Galera decides that it cannot commit any more transactions, it will now just pass it on to the next node. All transactions are processed independently of each cluster node, and you can uh, replace transaction write sets at commit time right before the commit, and if there are any cl conflicts, cluster-wide conflicts are informed, and the victim will have to do a rollback. But generally speaking, this is how G Galera works, and it's pretty good because it's been around now for more than a couple of years. But it only gained fa fame when HTTP cluster came out, and then later on, Galera cluster came out. You may be using replication regularly. My suggestion is always make sure you're using a modern MySQL server or a MariaDB server with a group commit in the binary log turned on. That means sync bin log equals one, and it'll be flush log at transaction commit equals one. If you want to have automated failover with regular replication, use something like MHA. And then after that, while you're at it, turn on semi-synchronous replication, something that has been around since MySQL 5.5. Why semi-synchronous replication important? Because when you make a transaction commit, you know that with semi-synchronous replication, at least one slave got it. And with the way MHA works, it will require that it finds the latest slave and then merges the, the bin logs, the differential relay logs between all the other slaves. So MHA will allow you to run replication and have very low to zero downtime, where downtime is measured in less than 30 seconds if you have a master fail. I give a talk on MHA as well. I, I gave one uh, about three weeks ago. You can also reference that up there as well. Another very common thing that we get is, oh, I'm, I'm in the cloud. I have some nodes in Oregon, and I also want to have some nodes in, in North Virginia, and uh, I want to have some more nodes in Singapore. Uh, Galera works wonderful over multiple geographies. You can get MySQL with regular replication as well as MariaDB with re regular replication to work with things like semi-sync as well. But with Galera, what you want to do is synchronous in one data center, so synchronous, say, in Oregon. But over the WAN, you may use something like time-delayed replication or asynchronous replication to the next data center. And then you'll have your application decide logically where it should be serving things. So your load balancer will always say, OK, maybe I want this, 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 this user has come from this IP, so this IP will be served from one data center. Uh, again, we've done this relatively well across so far up to four data centers, all using the Amazon um, EC2, and it's turned out to be fine. There are so many benchmarks out there that if I, if I tell you one benchmark, you will probably go and try and get another vendor to tell you another benchmark, and they may all be just lies. My suggestion is find a benchmark you can repeat. So every time we do benchmarks, we publish them on Launchpad so that you can download it and run this bench yourself. And uh, if you can't find a benchmark you can repeat, create your own benchmark because benchmarks are very, um, they're just statistic oriented. But your workload is very different from what you get out of Sysbench, for example. So run your own benchmarks. But the one good thing we've, we've done is by us publishing benchmarks is that Oracle now notices that we exist. So Oracle also performs benchmarks against uh, us. So it's, 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 I believe the old marketing adage is never ever compare yourself to your competitor, especially if they're smaller than you. We're really small, but apparently Oracle now compares against us too. Now, as a Drupal user, security is very important. A few days ago, I installed uh, Drupal straight out of Ubuntu 12.04, I think, or something. And the first thing you do when you get into the admin panel is it tells you there is a newer version of Drupal available. Please download it because this will improve your security. Now, MySQL used to be like that too. Every time we get a security release, we would make a release out within 48 hours. However, now Oracle has moved to a more critical patch update phase, so they release major security fixes once every three months and they create new, new CVE bugs for those. We and MariaDB are very committed to security and we release 
bug fixes in less than 48 hours. It's our general commitment to all users. This is what's made us really popular with Linux distributions, which is why they're shifting to using MariaDB as a default. Another thing is we don't like regressions. We do testing heavily. So imagine if suddenly you decide that you have partition tables because you have large amounts of, of data that is stored inside Drupal, maybe using views, lots of large views, partition archive data. And then suddenly you also depend on the query cache, but then when you did a minor upgrade, that feature went away. The query cache was disabled. You should never ever do that in a running release. You should say it's going to be deprecated in, like, the, next, in the next major release. We don't like regressions, so we ensure that you don't get these regressions inside of MariaDB. And we introduce new features really carefully. Maybe an option like um, Reflex looks very hot now, but after maybe three or four releases later, you find out that this Reflex option was really a uh, not well-tested bug. And we never introduced this one li little feature w for the InnoDB adaptive checkpoint option. So again, stuff, you have to be really careful with what you do, and we don't just do blind merges of MySQL. We actually pay close attention to make sure that Nothing wonky is going on. We, don't want, we want to make sure you get the best MariaDB out there. So we love, we love the community. We love working with the community. Here are some stats, um, the humble brag slides of lots of English downloads. We have you know, huge amounts of downloads. We have great active mailing lists. We're part of Google Summer of Code in 2013. We have lots of active user groups, none in Portland, but some in San Francisco. MariaDB is clearly gaining popularity. Wikipedia migrated the entire English Wikipedia to MariaDB, so that gave us um, some very good press. Fedora and OpenSUSE ship MariaDB as default, so now if you do yum install MySQL, you actually get MariaDB server. Kind of counterintuitive, because you could be expecting MySQL, but then suddenly you got MariaDB server. But that goes to the f show the fact that we are a drop-in replacement. Many other Linux distributions have also followed suit. We have many, many stories in the knowledge base, like Limelight Networks and Nimbus. They actually moved from, um, they, they use TalkUDB as well as MariaDB. Paybox is, is, uh, actually does stuff um, with credit cards. So they're like Square, but in France. They handle like 30 or 40% of all credit card transactions in France. So I have, I have a little slide of deployments that we've had, a few stories. Craigslist, for example, is fully MariaDB and MongoDB and, and Sphinx-backed, so they, they keep uh, Mongo archive data in MongoDB, but current data inside of MariaDB. Mozilla has moved from Percona's patched 5.1 to MariaDB 5.5, mainly because they like subquery optimizations for some of their databases. Um, Spam Experts was actually the biggest migrator from the earliest migrator as well to MariaDB. They migrated thousands of servers from MySQL to MariaDB, so we were very happy to have them. They started with 300 servers, and now they're in the thousands. Um, travelblog.org is a Drupal-based site that now daily optimization time has dropped from 24 minutes to four minutes, so MariaDB is clearly doing something right. Web hosting companies also like us. Slash Gear says that you know, he saves so much in infrastructure costs because he runs in the cloud, so he's doing more with less. So there are many more of these success stories as well. Paybox is probably the coolest because, for me anyway, because I sat in a cab in France and you can see the, your, your card is being served by Paybox. So when you, you, know, you swipe your Amex at the end of the ride, it's actually being served using MariaDB. A very commonly asked question is, if I were to change across to MariaDB, would my existing MySQL databases work without issue or is there anything I need to consider or watch out for? Yes, it'll work fine. ExtraDB really is a better InnoDB. You can uninstall MySQL, install MariaDB, and it will just work. If it doesn't just work, file a bug, let us know. Today, if you do app get install or app get update or yum update or yum or zipper update, you, you get upgrades in C2. So that's in place upgrades. So you will have downtime naturally during the upgrade, but that's it. Common migration tactics include upgrading a slave, which you can later promote to a master. So there's no downtime there. In fact, you can run performance to make sure that the slave is performing potentially better than your master. And if you're upgrading to Galera, you just add a node first, get it to replicate, create your Galera cluster externally, and then you know, kill off the old repli replicants. 
A very, a very other common question is, is this stuff supported? Yes, it is supported. You can buy support from every MySQL vendor except Oracle. <laughs> MariaDB is supported for five years from the date of release, and this is a commitment we have for security as well as minor feature updates. Many hosting companies are getting on the bandwagon, and I think the next thing we need to work on is make a huge long list of who supports it and in what regions. But Wyatree, um, for example, announced that they love MariaDB heap table performance and made a press release some time ago as well. Uh, I'm sitting at the SkySQL booth. Like, I spent the whole day today talking about MariaDB, so I'm surprised I'm still talking now. And uh, we are backed by the foundation, just like the Drupal Foundation. So, any tuning tips? And I'm saving the best for last. You should use MySQL NDMS. This is a, a new driver. You can, up, you can just do packle install MySQL NDMS. And this one does replication, load balancing, as well as read-write splitting. It's pretty cool. You should definitely check it out. Anybody here running that? No. You should definitely update to this. If you are going to use Galera cluster as well, highly recommended that you use this. Use ExtraDB. Please, please, if you're still on my ISM, ditch it. Transactions are the way to go. We ship a more sane my.cnf. So by default, when you install MariaDB, it should be ready for you to run. But always configure your my.cnf. It's amazing how many times we find people never having configured my.cnf. Now there are tools available for you to help. help. Config.skyscale.com or tools.percona.com. Both will allow you to configure a, a my.cnf based on the kind of load you have. Use replication. Benefit from binary group log commit, so use replication, seriously. There are a couple of scripts, tuning primer and MySQL tuner. They are pretty okay tools for you to try. If you don't know how to configure your my.cnf or other options, even operating system options. Percona toolkit is indispensable. Download it. If you use MySQL seriously, you must at least use PT MySQL summary or PT query digest to see what's wrong. Why are your queries doing what they're doing? PT MySQL summary used to be called MySQL report. There is a fairly old document circulating from, uh, I think, Tag1 Consulting on how you could um, ha you know, configure MySQL. That document needs to be updated because lots of these tools have changed. So um, I guess I'm going to have many blog posts from this particular talk. I'm going to expand on, th on this. And we have lots of knowledge inside the knowledge base as well. We have a whole bunch of resources. If you have a bug, mariadb.org slash jira is a good place. If you want to talk about MariaDB, that's MariaDB, MariaDB Discuss or Maria Developers. We're on Facebook, so like us. We're on Twitter, you can follow us. You can um, plus us on Google+. You want to chat with any of us, just jump on hash Maria on Freenode. We're like always there because we kind of work in a distributed environment. I'm, I'm based in Malaysia sometimes. And um, we have people all around the world, so you can always find answers to your, your questions. And the knowledge base, it's indispensable. I suggest always reading it. If you have a question, go there, because chances are it's already been answered. And I have time for questions. Any questions? Oh, there's the mic. Hi. <laughs> Um, do you have any plans to put uh, MariaDB in like really simple one-click graphical installers like MAMP or WAMP just to help increase adoption? Right. Um, we have a one-click installer for Windows that um, we also ship with. That also comes with Heidi SQL, so you get a nice GUI as well. It's not a one-click installer. I mean, you have to press next, next, next. Right, right. But we also have. But but we d we do want to do that. If anybody's interested in WAMP or XAMPP or something, we would love to work with them or they should switch over to us, but we don't have direct plans to actually have such a distribution because we figure most of our efforts should be focused on the Unixes and these cloud deployment platforms, which is where not the developers may not be using it, but that's where the deployments happen. So, But it, it might be something that even you would like to work on. Yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly lazy and just like the okay. control panel. <laughs> for Windows or? Uh, on Macintosh for MAMP. Okay, MAMP, okay. We'll look into that. Uh, Brew we, install MariaDB. <laughs> yes. client tools like PHP MyAdmin or uh, Workbench? So PHP MyAdmin works with MariaDB. If you go to PHP MyAdmin's website, it tells you MySQL, MariaDB, or Drizzle. So yes, we fully work with PHP MyAdmin. Um, we highly recommend you use it. They've improved the interface now to include things like monitoring 
And PHP MyAdmin makes use of our GIS extensions because it also does do display geospatial information now as well. So PHP MyAdmin, for all intents and purposes, works really well. Do we have an alternative to Workbench? Workbench also works with this stuff. However, we ship Heidi SQL inside of the Windows version. And uh, I believe Sky SQL sells SQL Yog. <laughs> they call it some fangled something. What is it called? Sky SQL something. So SQL Yog is another option. So um, no, we don't, we don't plan to make any GUI tools ourselves from the server side, but there are definitely alternatives. And if you are using a Mac, there's like a really beautiful Cocoa application available. That looks like a potentially Windows machine or? Okay, uh, Windows, we ship Heidi SQL. So if you download MariaDB, it comes with Heidi SQL by default. And Heidi SQL supports all our extensions, including virtual columns, dynamic columns, and so on. So download it and uh, give it a go because Heidi SQL is actually pretty good. Yes. Uh, does MariaDB do anything to improve the performance of temporary files that are being written to disk? Right. So we, we def definitely improve temporary file performance because we don't use MyISAM internally for temporary tables. We use um, ARIA. ARIA is something like an eight times performance improvement over MyISAM, and it gives you the one added benefit of it's being crash safe. So in the event that your MySQL server crashes, MyISAM will take a long time to recover that, even though it's temporary data, but um, ARIA doesn't. ARIA will be instant recovery. Okay. So yes, we have, we have worked on that as well. few members on my team that work with Aqua Dev Desktop, are you working with them at all to integrate Maria into their releases as well? I believe that there are some talks from SkySQL and Aquia to maybe integrate more. Aquia Dev Desk, but Their, we... Uh, yeah, yeah, Dev Desktop, yeah. Dev Desktop, yeah. We at, we at Team MariaDB have not worked on this per se, but we would definitely like to have more partnerships and integrations, so it's something that we'll do as a to-do list. Any other questions? <laughs> oh. Hey there. Thank you for the talk. It'd be good to see more um, documentation on Galeria. Galeria. Right. Gal Galeria cluster. Sorry. Some of the config files don't really launch the cluster right away, and there's a lot of errors. So. OK. Um, so kb.askmonty.org has some documentation. But yeah, I agree. We're definitely short on documentation for that, and MHA even. like. I'm kind of embarrassed I have to recommend you to look at my slide deck for MHA, but um, yeah, we need to definitely improve documentation and it's something we will definitely work on. And if you, if you find that there is a problem with the file, why don't you just go to the knowledge base and open a question and say, hey, this, this file doesn't work, or re just report a bug, because yeah, I think we're, 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 we can do pretty well with writing code and stuff, but it seems like we're pretty bad with writing documentation. And the foundation has kind of improved that because we have hired a documentation writer at the foundation. We, I sincerely hope it will improve our documentation. But I will also take that as an action item to point him to improving it. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Oh, you, you have a question. Yes, I believe we had some problems with the Drupal website like a couple of days ago. But it will be it will be on SlideShare as well as on the website. So I upload everything to SlideShare. The username is ByteBot. Yeah, I, I'm standing right between you and your beer. <laughs> There's apparently beer at the expo hall. Any other questions? <laughs> if all right, well, thank you very much for listening.